So let's look at uh, how to determine the sample size using the margin of error. And we shall be looking at this in the context of estimating the mean and also estimating the, uh, the proportion using confidence intervals. We have already seen that uh, when using the mean, uh, in the context of, let's say, estimating the mean, in the context of estimating the, the CI for the mean, we say that the sample size is given by Z squared and sigma squared divided by margin of error squared. Because we said that margin of error given by plus or minus Z, then you have sigma over root N. So making N the subject of the formula, we obtain this, we obtain this. Then in the context of proportions, context of uh, estimating uh, the CI for, for pi, let's see for pi, for the population proportion, we have a, uh, we have n is equal to n is equal to z squared p q over margin of error squared because you said that margin of error in the context of estimating confidence intervals for the proportion is given by plus or minus z then we have p q over n square root so if you make n the subject of the formula, you'll end up with what we have there. So I want us to do this by use of a, a simple example. Uh, so let's check out uh, the past paper that we've been uh, that we've been solving, the cut past paper that I've shared with you in the in the in the group. So from that example, we have seen that uh, we are told that margin of error that uh, the student can tolerate a margin of error of 120 shillings. And then uh, we are working with uh, the estimate should be reported within 95% confidence, confidence level. And the standard deviation is 987. The question is find N. The question is find N. So solution, we say at 95% uh, confidence level, uh, Z is, we have seen this, uh, 1.96 plus and minus. So uh, now we can use the formula N is equal to Z squared, sigma squared over margin of error squared to estimate the size of sample that is required to guarantee this margin of error when the other information is given like that. So this would be 1.96 squared, doesn't matter whether it is plus or minus, multiplied by uh, 987 squared divided by margin of error squared. So when you simplify that, uh, what do you get? So when you simplify that, you get 259.8 point eight eight or let's say point eight nine and because the sample size uh, cannot be a decimal value you say this is approximately 260. so this researcher here needs to choose a size of uh, a sample of size 260 in order to achieve this margin of error at this level of confidence if standard deviation is equal to that okay so that's how you estimate the size of sample using the margin of error in the context of estimating the population mean. When we come to the case of proportion, uh, a similar approach, a similar approach, but as you've seen, as we mentioned, you use a different formula, you use a different formula. So we'll not have an example to, to show that, but it should be easy for you to do that, okay? Then before we conclude, uh, I want us to mention something about, uh, I want us to mention something about uh, confidence intervals. For 
the difference of means and proportions or the difference of means and proportions or in the case of two independent samples two independent samples okay and we are just going to mention uh how the confidence interval is obtained but uh, we shall be having the practical examples later on so the key difference or what you need to note here is how to obtain uh, the standard error in each case. So the standard error for the difference of means and standard error for the difference of proportions. But the structure of the formula of confidence interval is the same, just like what we saw up there. It is the value of the statistic plus and minus the standard error, I mean the margin of error in this case. So Roman one, uh, for the difference of means, for the difference of means, uh, confidence intervals are given by you take x bar one minus x bar two plus and minus z multiplied by standard error of the difference of means z multiplied by standard error of the difference of means uh, it's good for you to note that this item here is the margin of error is the margin of error so the, the standard error for difference of means is given by this huh? plus minus z then here you have square root sigma one squared over n1 plus sigma two squared over n2 okay but when sigma is not known when sigma is not known You say uh, the confidence interval is equal to x bar one minus x bar, so there's a one and a two here, uh, two plus minus. You still use z, but now here you replace with s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2 for large n1 and n2, for large samples in short large samples so when the samples are large we continue using z okay <clears throat> or you can use you can use ci is equal to x bar one minus x bar two plus minus t square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2 for small samples for small samples which are coming from normal populations. So the issue of normality must be satisfied. Huh? You can see the central limit theorem again. The explanation is in the definition of central limit theorem. Okay. So basically that's how you obtain the, the confidence interval for the difference of means. So we say, uh, Maybe a better way of writing this is a CI for, <coughs> this should be CI for mu one minus mu two for consistency. So CI for mu one minus mu two, uh, same case down here and even up there. So this is CI, this is CI for, for mu one minus mu two, same case here. Uh, ci for mu one difference of means okay where of course x bar one and x bar two are the are the sample means for the two samples then mu one and mu two are the population means of the two groups the population means of the two groups all right then uh the confidence interval for difference of proportions is defined in a similar manner so confidence interval CI for difference of proportion so this is given by CI remember because we population uh, proportions so let's recall that recall that proportions uh, come from 
from biromial distributions uh, for biromial distributions so for us to assume normality of the statistic in question here then the size of sample must be large for us to assume normality of the difference of proportion then the size of samples must be large so in the context of proportions we shall not be using the t distribution and that means we shall also not be choosing small uh, uh, small sizes of samples so we have uh, so ci will be given by uh, so let's say that uh, ci for pi 1 minus pi 2 will be given by p1 minus p2 those are the sample proportions plus minus z square root of p hat q hat 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 okay so for the proportions we shall not be using the t distribution or the t values because the samples must be large okay uh, that's according to the central limit theorem so uh, again this item here the whole of this item is the margin of error and the item under square root this item here is the standard error so let me say that uh, standard error so this item uh, square root of p hat q hat 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 is the standard error for the difference of proportions the standard error for the difference of proportions p hat is the combined proportion of success for the two groups for the two samples chosen the combined proportion of success so is the number of successes in the first group which is n1 p1 plus the number of successes in the second group which is given by that n2 p2 divided by number of observations in the two groups combined and then q hat will be 1 minus p hat and just like we saw in the case of uh, a single sample proportion p hat will be a number between 0 and 1 be a number between 0 and 1 so basically that's how you compute uh, confidence intervals for difference of proportions and uh, uh, difference of means so we'll be having uh, we'll be doing this practically uh, once we cover uh, hypothesis testing because and hypothesis testing uh, will be covering or will be dealing with uh, uh, the computation of standard errors for difference of proportions and difference of means so for today we can stop there uh, unless there's a question so if there's no question let's meet next week thank you